Boobies, boobies, boobies. That's all guys think about these days. Well, they're idiots. Show me a boob man and I'll show you a no-brain, no-class knuckle-dragger who knows nothing of the fair sex. They don't get it. You can't take the measure of a good woman just by ogling her chest. There are far more important things to consider. Following up from Samurai Champloo, Shinichiro Watanabe went back to his roots for another space adventure. Space Dandy is the visionary director's most ambitious project yet, acting as a culmination of Watanabe's previous works as well as something entirely new. Hi everyone, welcome to Jump Report. I'm your host Noah. And I'm Taylor. And today we present to you Space Dandy. Bam! If you guys haven't already seen Space Dandy, we are going to get into spoiler territory here. So just a heads up. In the first episode, we are introduced to our hero, Dandy. Dandy is a loser and is a failure at his job as an alien hunter. We also get to meet his crewmates, which include an outdated robot named QT and a freeloading cat-like alien named Meow. After a series of alien hunting hijinks, the episode climactically ends, with our protagonists dying. With them suddenly being alive in the next episode. If there was one thing I learned about this pilot episode, it's that Space Dandy does not care about continuity. Sure, previous events are referenced by characters and there is an evil galactic empire who hunts Dandy from episode to episode. However, the actual continuity is borderline non-existent. Watanabe uses this to the show's advantage, giving us episodes that are vastly different in tone and subject matter, without having to deal with the burdens of continuity. Just imagine how screwed Watanabe's previous shows would be if Spike and crew were to arbitrarily die once every two episodes. Meanwhile, in Dandy, one episode could feature a universe-ending zombie outbreak, only for our main characters to be fine in the next. I find that not only the first episode is a good introduction to the expectations you need going into Dandy, but so is the second episode, Taylor will get into that one later, which provides audiences with Space Dandy's ability to juggle humor with thoughtful moments. These two episodes provide a good baseline of what to expect going forward into Space Dandy. The best way to describe the tone of Space Dandy is camp. For those of you who don't know what camp is, it is a style of work that is intended to come off as hokey, corny, ironic, and at times, intentionally bad. If you watch the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies or his Evil Dead trilogy, you've seen camp. I recommend actually that you check out Super Bunny Hop's analysis on Metal Gear Solid 3, link in the description. He does a really good job explaining camp and some of what he discusses for Metal Gear Solid 3 and applied to Space Dandy. In short, Dandy is a show that revels in its irony and hokiness, and while it is played up for laughs, camp is used heavily to give more impact to the more emotional moments of the anime. It almost conditions your brain to expect a light-hearted mood, only to occasionally hit you with some very serious feels. I think a show that compares closely to Space Dandy is actually Brick and Morty. Both feature themes of aliens, science fiction, and character interactions within a vast universe. Where the two shows diverge, however, is that Space Dandy is way more upbeat, but it doesn't stray from its more darker and more emotional moments when it needs to. Camp is definitely a main factor in how Dandy does this, and I think the lasting impression it leaves on the audience is more positive. Space Dandy has shown me some of the most impactful scenes I've ever seen in anime. Throughout the show, the viewer is conditioned to expect goofy antics and plots with no real consequences. The playful usage of continuity and the lack thereof, as well as the theme of camp that we see in the show, creates an expectation that the subject matter will be goofy or inconsequential as well. Space Dandy intentionally conditions the viewer this way in order to allow the more serious moments of the show to have more impact by subverting the audience's expectations. This technique of subversion is not unique to Space Dandy, but it is executed to perfection. The first case of this subversion can be seen in the second episode, where Dandy and the crew are on a hunt for the universe's best ramen. After an entire episode of hunting down the ramen, Dandy finds the alien chef who's been trapped in a wormhole. He's been sending the ramen he makes back through the wormhole to customers on the other side. After talking with the shop owner, 
Dandy realizes the wormhole is about to close and offers to take the alien chef back with him, but the shop owner refuses. The shop owner tells Dandy and Meow that he has long forgotten the feeling of loneliness and chooses to remain at his shop making ramen, even if it means there will be nobody to eat it in the future. This choice by the shop owner shows the audience a glimpse into the psyche of this alien, and his dedication to his craft, combined with years of isolation, has led him to accept his fate. The best ramen and ramen chef in the universe are lost forever after this episode, but the chef was content with that, as he knew after meeting Dandy, he had fulfilled his purpose. What originally was a silly episode about getting ramen turned into a thought-provoking piece of media. It asked the question, what is purpose? In the show we see that different characters all have their own motivations and definitions of success. The shop owner believed that his purpose was to make the best ramen, and instead of following Dandy back to the real world, he chooses to stay in place even if it means his death. Did the shop owner make the right choice? It's not our place to say, and Dandy Meow chose to respect his choice as he is the only one qualified to make it. Purpose is something you define for yourself, and your interpretation of purpose is the only correct definition for you. This is still a more lighthearted example when compared to some other themes present in the show, but because it occurs at the second episode, it does a good job of setting a precedent that the tone can become serious at any point and the themes explored during these scenes can have a lasting impact on the viewer. Before making this video, I looked over the Space Dandy videos that Scamboli and Alex had made and both brought up great points about the comedy of Space Dandy. A lot of times in anime, you see the same beats and punchlines used for comedy, such as a clumsy and perverted MC tripping and falling onto a potential love interest's chest. Dandy avoids such tropes when it comes to its comedy, which is surprising considering how much of a horn dog Dandy himself can be. The writers of Space Dandy never go out of their way to make a joke that would compromise the established foundations of a character, but rather, build upon it instead. For example, a joke that I like related to Dandy's past life as a pro surfer, when his first established, we're led to believe that Dandy is bullshit, but soon we find out that he was actually telling the truth, leading to one of the most beautiful and humorous endings we've seen in anime. But this notion of Dandy is not a one-off thing. In later episodes, we see Dandy utilizing his talents that were a firmly established part of his character. In another episode, we get to see Dandy's old flame and at first her identity isn't given, which helps build suspense to the punchline reveal. And once his ex is shown on screen, we're not only laughing, but could totally see Dandy going for that, based on what the writers had already established about his character. One episode that shines in comedy is episode 4, where Dandy and the crew battle a zombie outbreak. If you've seen any other zombie related shows or movies, you would be fair to assume that this Space Dandy take on the genre would be similar in premise, which is simply to survive. However, survival isn't in the cards for Dandy and the crew, and we see them all become infected. The only problem is, is this happens in the middle of the episode, and what we're left with is a hilarious depiction of the day-to-day -day lives of a universe of only zombified aliens. I like to imagine this episode to be a comedic version of Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho, where we see our main character die halfway through the story and see how things go from there. When it comes to Space Dandy, Watanabe's full creative freedom is on display here. We previously mentioned that Space Dandy feels like a culmination of all of Watanabe's previous works with his storytelling, characterizations, and presentation being cranked to the max. He also doesn't shy away from explicitly referencing pop culture, other animes, and even his past work. Watanabe also brought other creatives to direct some episodes with big industry names such as Katsuhiro Tomo, director of Akira, and Kiyotaka Oshiyama, who has worked as a director for episodes of Devilman Crybaby. Kensuke Oshiho, who helped with composing the music for Silent Voice, 
also assisted with composing music for Dandy. Each of these creatives helped to make Space Dandy one of the most imaginative animes you can find out there today. A fun fact about Space Dandy's production is that it was actually one of the first anime to have the dubbed episodes be released simultaneously with the native version. Before Dandy, this was something that really wasn't done by the anime industry and since Dandy, a lot of well-known anime have been following this style of releasing episodes. My top 3 episodes are 9, 10, and 14, with honorable mentions being 23, 22, 18, and 16. Just like with the Samurai Champloo video, I'm not going to go too deep into reasons why I like these episodes, since I would just prefer if everyone watched and experienced these episodes on their own. For me, episode 9 was that moment. That moment where everything clicked, and where I finally realized that the humor of Space Dandy was a thin veil that covered a very deep and emotional show. I really liked that this episode fully embraced the film concept of show, don't tell, providing us with one of the most visually imaginative episodes of an anime ever, featuring a mysterious world of plant aliens that are anything but human. I'll be honest, when watching this episode, I didn't know what the f*** was going on half of the time. However, these plant aliens have very human struggles and conflicts. This concept actually carries nicely over to episode 10 which provides an emotional outlook into the family and character of Meow. Although they're just cats in clothes, this episode provides that human relatability we, as the audience, can empathize with. The story for this episode is a lot more personal and intimate, reminding me of the side characters episodes from Cowboy Bebop. However, it still retains some of that spacey, dandy, cosmic feel, with a Groundhog Day style twist that somehow is incorporated perfectly into this episode's main plot. Lastly, let's talk about episode 14. This episode is a big deal, folks. It literally pioneered the multiverse concept that you see in lesser shows like Rick and Morty and films such as <coughs> the Marvel Philomatic Universe. Stephen Strange, you now call before the Illuminati, the best chemist in the world, Walter Ryan. In this episode, we see the dandy trio get tied up with versions of themselves from every single universe. And these aren't just dandies with a slight change, no no no. These are dandies, meows, and cuties that are so drastically different that there is nothing but a thin semblance between each respective iteration. In one universe, dandy is a trucker, in another, a successful alien hunter, in another, a dancing child, in another, Ryo from City Hunter, in another, a woman, in another, a ninja from Naruto. Don't forget the Nardwar Titan dandy. Yes, him too. In another, Hypebeast Lego Bear. I want to die. What? This episode is one of the high points of humor in the show, and arguably one of the most iconic episodes of Space Dandy. I would most definitely pit this episode against anything else Watanabe has ever made for just how insane and creative it is. Okay, Taylor, your turn. Episode 5 was when I started liking Dandy as a character. I won't lie, I tried to watch the show a few years ago, and I dropped it after three episodes. The reason was I didn't like how Dandy acted. He was portrayed as dumb and unsuccessful, and his interactions with other characters made him look like an asshole. When I tried watching the show again recently, I ran into the same issue. It wasn't until this episode that Dandy began to shine. On his hunt for a rare alien that can transfer people's minds, Dandy finds himself unwittingly playing the role of a father. The emotions this episode brings to life caused me to reconsider my past grievances with the show and truly give it a second chance. This episode brilliantly showcases the hidden depth to Space Dandy as a character and for the series as a whole. This episode also features the first use of the track Dandy in Love, which is one of our favorites off the soundtrack. Dropping the show before episode 5 is doing yourself a great disservice.
In episode 18, we see Devilman Crybaby director Kiyotaka Oshiyama take the reins as he directs what's basically a beautiful episode of Deadliest Catch. Ah, in this episode, the crew is on the hunt for a legendary fish called the Munagi. Dandy enlists help from a grumpy old fisherman and his apprentice to take their shot at history. The art style for this episode takes inspiration from great Japanese paintings like The Great Wave, as well as capturing an almost Studio Ghibli-esque vibe. This episode gave me a feeling of awe while I was watching it that felt special even compared to other epic moments from episodes prior. Episode 23 Hurts Scarlet, the receptionist at the Alien Registration Center, hires Dandy to pretend to be her boyfriend in order to ward off her crazy ex who has a knack for stalking. They go on vacation for a week and spend their time together doing fun couple activities at a fancy resort. This episode is obviously setting up an enemies to lovers trope, and I was excited for Dandy, who at this point I love as a character, to finally get some romantic success, as I felt that he had actually earned it this time. The reason this episode hurts is that it hits you with the reality check. Sometimes things just don't work out, and it's nobody's fault. This episode took me high and dropped me low as it showed a realistic outlook on love and relationships and left me with a bittersweet taste in my mouth. I actually hated this episode after I watched it, and it wasn't until I had some time to think about it did my appreciation for it begin. Any other show would have seen Dandy get the girl, and this fact alone shows what makes Dandy so unique. Another one. どうやって生きていくか。それが問題だ。それはどうやって死ぬかと同じことじゃない。違う。死ぬことなんか考えたくない。そんな風に生きていくなんて拷問だ。考えたくなくたってどうせ誰もが死ぬんでしょう。死
I'm still pretty dandy. To address the white elephant in the room, yes, Dandy is commonly seen as the black sheep of the Shinichiro Watanabe trilogy. I can definitely see why that is with Dandy's humor being a driving force of the show, and for some, Dandy's humor is just not for them, and it's a turn off in some ways. However, I encourage everyone to give this show a second chance, it definitely deserves it. I know a lot of people went into the series expecting Cowboy Bebop 2.0 and to that I also say, give it a second chance. Just this time around, don't go into it thinking it's going to be Cowboy Bebop 2.0, but think of it as something else entirely different. Just like with Dandy himself, the show Space Dandy is stupid, like really stupid, but underneath lies a lot of heart and spirit. Check out the sub, and for our fans who don't regularly watch anime, watch the dub. The dub is up there with Bebops, and honestly, Space Dandy could pass as a western cartoon more so than an anime. Thank you everyone for tuning into this episode. Space Dandy is honestly an underrated classic and we're hoping that with this video we bring more eyes to the series. Now if you just started watching Space Dandy or you've already finished Space Dandy, let us know in the comments below what your favorite episode was. We couldn't cover all of our favorite episodes so we're curious to see what other people are saying about the show. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be doing an analysis on the Tatami Galaxy, so you guys can expect another longer video like this in a few weeks, with a smaller video coming soon. Make sure to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you haven't, and we look forward to seeing you in the next one. Peace.